Okay, we are now ready for week three of our business information modeling course. In the last week, we had looked at an introduction to SQL. We'll now take this introduction a little bit further by looking at some fairly complicated queries. By now you're familiar with this diagram. What I pointed out is that we're going to look at the database as the heart of an enterprise application because it contains the memory of the application. And we said we'll first study SQL, which is what we're doing now, which is the way by which we access information stored inside the relational database. Once we finish that, we'll go on to look at how to design these databases Right now, we are seeing databases that I've already designed and given to you, but we'll see how to design the databases. And then finally, once we have learned how to design a database, we'll then go and look at how to build a web-based application using the database that we've already defined. Okay, before we go further, what I'd like to do is to quickly review how to use PHP MySQL as well as for those who are using Windows 8, the workaround to use the MySQL console. I want to review these two things because there were a couple of questions uh, and people were a little confused. So let's start with that. So in order to use PHP MySQL, of course, first of all, VAMP server has to be running. On Mac, you go to the launcher and run the VAMP server, uh, and then you'll see that it's running. It's no big deal. On Windows, you have to run the VAMP start VAMP server icon that is on your desktop and you should run the icon the one with the shield on it say start vamp server now in my case the vamp server is already running the only way for you to know if it's already running is to look for the w sign at the bottom right of your screen or alternately if it's not directly visible click on the small triangle and then you should see the vamp icon if vamp is running if vamp is not running and you don't see the icon then of course you need to start a vamp by running it from the shortcut okay now once you've started up vamp another thing you want to make sure is to click on it and see that it's online so right now it's saying put it offline that means it is online which is good if it's not online then you won't be able to uh, access it from a browser okay so the next thing for us to do is uh, once it's running on the windows platform to invoke php my admin which is you can directly click on php my admin or just click on localhost okay so you can either do the uh, click on localhost which will open up the main window of the web server and then click on php my admin right here or alternately you could directly go to the vamp menu here and then click on php my admin which should take you directly into php my admin there's no difference just two different ways of getting at the same thing As I've already told you, PHP My Admin is your way of interacting with your MySQL database. And once you start PHP My Admin, on the left hand side, you will see all the databases which are on your system, on your MySQL database system. Of course, I'm seeing a lot of databases here. You clearly will not have all of these. You definitely will have SPJ New. You should. If not, you should download the corresponding file from Blackboard, import it as I had indicated earlier and then you'll have it. So to do that, you'll say import. And here you say choose file and then select wherever you've stored the spjnew.sql file that you downloaded from Blackboard. If you have not got up to that point, I strongly suggest that you go to Blackboard, read the instructions carefully and carry out those steps. Okay, so now you've got your databases uh, and you can select of all the databases that you have, you can select which one to use for a particular session. So I'm going to click on SPJ new, which makes it the current database. And what we are going to say is all the SQLs and stuff that we're going to run will be against that database. So the moment I selected SPJ new, I'm able to see all the tables, parts, projects, shipments, suppliers, all the tables inside the database. And I can click on a particular uh, in fact, I even see the tables here. You can click on any table 
and it will show you the details of the data in that table. So for example, we are seeing the parts table right here, the six parts, and then we can see the projects table, uh, the shipments table, the suppliers table, and all of that. Okay, so now that you've got the tables going, uh, you can run SQL commands by clicking on SQL and entering your SQL command right here, whatever SQL command you want. So for example, you may say select uh, S name comma quantity, uh, let's say uh, part number, project number, quantity from suppliers join shipments actually I won't give this command this is a little more complicated than uh, I'm just going to give a simple command select star from parts okay and then you enter whatever value valid SQL command say go it executes and shows you the results okay now if your command has errors so go back and then you could make some errors in your commands uh, select forget this where one you know where one simply says select everything uh, suppose I say select star from supplier then I say go okay so it's going to say there's an error it says table spj new dot supplier doesn't exist because our table was called suppliers okay so if you get an error you're going to see the error message here often just by reading the error message you should be able to figure out what the problem is okay now well, php my admin also has some small facility so you don't have to type select uh, you can just click select and then it's going to give you something and then you can go and edit it okay so this is the select star button that i selected instead if i just click on select it'll uh, you know it's just showing you all the fields and then you can edit it suitably for what you want okay those are all niceties you can just type in the command so that is how you would use php my admin now for those for whom php my admin is refusing to work on windows 8 i had already shown you a method by which you can do this you can go here see w vamp icon go to mysql go to mysql console and then when it asks for the password, just press enter. We don't have a password. And you can interact with MySQL right here. Uh, but before you do that, of course, you should have imported the database. If And I had given the steps to import the database here. I will not repeat those commands. Um, I've posted a document on Blackboard, which will help you do this. Okay. So assuming the database has already been imported, I can say use spj new. I'm just saying use this as my as the database, which is equivalent to just uh, clicking on SPJ new in the PHP my admin. So it says database changed. That's the current database. I can now issue various commands against this database. Okay, so for example, I can say select star. Now the point is in when you're interacting with uh, the MySQL console you have to end all your SQL commands with a semicolon. Okay, now the system will be looking for the semicolon to know that you finished entering the command. So right now I can enter the whole command here. Supplier, select star from suppliers and press semicolon and then enter. So the command, since I entered the semicolon and pressed enter, it says, okay, you finished entering your command. Suppose I want to enter the command in multiple rows. I can say select star and then press enter so since I have not yet typed the semicolon the system knows that I haven't finished my command and the arrow that it's showing on the last row is saying okay please continue your command I can now say from suppliers okay I can end the command with a semicolon if I don't it is still waiting for me to enter the semicolon I could enter the semicolon now and then I press enter the command is now complete it executes the command Okay, so the uh, short, you know, to make a long story short, when you see the arrow sign, essentially your SQL processor is telling you, well, you haven't finished your enter entering your command completely, so please continue on the following line. 
okay so that's how that's working okay now some people ask me uh, I need to test out my command in oh by the way in swap all I want you to do is to simply enter the SQL command forget about the results I don't want the results I'm looking at the SQL command so the answer to a question is really the SQL command to satisfy that request that I'm asking you now some people ask me well how do I uh, on PHP my admin I can easily copy and paste because it's right there but how do I copy and paste from this window okay the copying and pasting from this window is a little bit different uh, but you can still do it all you have to do is to go to the title bar of this window right click and then say edit mark okay and then you select the part of the window that you want to copy so that so you mark it with your mouse and then again you right click and say edit and then copy now it's copy you can paste it somewhere else okay for example I can uh, go into let's say a text window that I have got and whatever I can just don't worry about what's on this I can paste it right here okay and so this is how you can paste it into swap of course you don't need to have the semicolon in swap so you can take it out and so on so you can do the copy and paste even from this okay so uh, that's how you would use the MySQL console in place of PHP my admin to operate on your database so we continue with the database of Chris date like the same database that we used last week and by now you're familiar with this database it has four tables suppliers parts projects shipments and this database is already provided to you in printed form with the course material on week two so that's already available from the prior week you can always get it so now we've already looked at a certain set of commands the basic commands basic SQL select statements right we saw how to select all the columns of a table how to select a certain set of columns of a table how to select only certain rows that satisfy specific conditions how to use aggregate functions we've looked at all of that um, I think by now you would have got adequate practice on those so now let's go forward and look at some more aspects of SQL okay so let's see we want to get uh, the details of all the suppliers in London or Paris okay so that's what we want to do and of course what we are looking at this is the supplier table it has suppliers from London Paris Athens but we are only interested in suppliers from London or Paris so the first second third and fourth suppliers are figure in our output the fifth one doesn't because that supplier is not from either London or Paris of course we already know how to do this we learned how to do this by using the or uh, logical operator in the where condition so we said select star from suppliers where city equals London or city equals Paris so you could do it like this but that's using the or logical operator there's another way to do this also and that is to do it using the in operator so you could say select star from suppliers where city in the set that is mentioned afterwards okay so uh, the second approach is more convenient especially when you have lots of values for which you want to check the condition that is you want to say where city is London or city is Paris or city is Athens or or otherwise you could say where the weight is 10 or weight is 20 or weight is 30 when you have many such options it's easier to code that in SQL using the in operator okay of course as always if you're using textual values you have to surround them with single quotes if it's numeric values just put the values as they are that is that doesn't change but the important point here is how to use the in operator okay so this is just an alternative okay uh, something for you to try out get all the details of green or blue parts as always when it's your turn you'll pause the video write down your answer make sure your answer is it's fine and then you can proceed with the video so you can use the pause button at the bottom to pause it do your work and then continue the video again I stress the importance of you trying to do it before you move on 
uh, I think that's the place where learning really occurs when you do something on your own and then when you come back and watch the video the video has value if you've not done it and if you just proceed with the video then you're going to lose out on some useful learning uh, you know you, you you're doing this so you might as well make best use of your time okay uh, so again what we are seeing is uh, green or blue parts so this is all the parts so green or blue parts there you've got green blue blue so those are the only three things that are going to figure in your output okay and that's what you're seeing here of course I'm sure you got this right you could do it using the or select star from parts where color equals green or color equals blue or you could do it using the preferred approach which says select star from parts where color in green comma blue which is the preferred approach so that's just another new thing that I introduced for you how to use the in operator